welcome back. It's Kyle again from Mantic, and this time I am extremely excited to show you your very first preview of the Twilight Kin rules. We're going to break these down into three separate videos, highlighting the Corsair and Twilight Elf style units, the Void Touch units, and the Cronebound units. This video is going to highlight those Corsairs. As I said in the design diaries, we really wanted a core infantry unit that capture the flavor of the faction and tells a little bit of a story. So for the Twilight Kin, we knew one of the directions that we wanted to go was for them to take away what your army does well. So for them, the Corsair Voidwalkers made the most sense to highlight this as a unit. At their base, their profile is very standard. They come in a troop regiment and horde with infantry stats, that melee 4+, plus, that defense 4+, plus, and really solid nerve. Their attacks scale as you would expect, but where they really shine is in those upgrades. So suddenly you have the option to take three different options on the unit. Each of them can be taken all at once. There's no limitations. So how you build these and customize these makes a lot of sense. The first being an upgrade to ensnare, which really kind of helps show those hooked swords, the nets that come on that hard plastic frame. The second is a blood hex. The blood hex is a unique item upgrade that are available for the Twilight Kin, mostly on the Corsair units. And what this does is that for one turn during the game, you can bump their defense by one. This takes them from defense four to five. And you can start to see the synergy when there's defense four going to five and in snare, suddenly you've got a very stout unit. Lastly, if you really want some extra offense, you can upgrade them to melee three. This makes the unit extremely functional offensively. And when you combine it with other synergies in the list, especially in the heroes, stay tuned, then you can see some really great and nasty offensive output. Next up is the Corsair Fleet Wardens. Now this is that hard plastic kit if you decide to take them and give them the two-handed pikes that they come with. Now this is a unit that really kind of starts to shine with what you see in normal phalanx style units. Built in crushing strength, built in phalanx, but obviously with elite and their higher number of attacks because of the spears. They've also got the option to purchase a blood hex, which bumps them up to defense five. And we all know that defense five phalanx units are really nasty. If you want, you can give them an upgrade to their nerve level as well. And this is just one source of an increase to their nerve level, which there are, again, synergies that increase them further with the hero options. So this becomes a really stout unit. I happen to love the regiment level, especially what you can do to their nerve. And you can put these guys up against cavalry unit or any kind of unit that you really want to stop a charge from and be very successful. If you want to crank out a bunch of attacks, then you can find some synergies offensively later in the list as well. Next up are the Corsair Void Skiffs. This is that chariot regiment of boats that we've seen the models for now, and they've got some really interesting and exciting rules. So first up, they are a chariot base. They've got Brutal, they've got Fly, they've got Nimble. Where those things come into effect is if you decide to purchase their optional upgrade for ranged attacks, you get access to this broadside rule. So this is very unique in Kings of War. What it means is that you are now going to draw line of sight from your flank arcs instead of the front arcs and shoot from there. So you treat the middle of the flank on the base as if it were the leader point. So it's just kind of a different way of thinking, but it opens up a lot of interesting possibilities. You can have backline defense with this unit. You can obviously threaten from a tremendous number of angles if you have the shot upgrade. So it's a really hard hitting unit if you're able to get them into the right positions. It's a great backline unit with fly and nimble. And obviously nimble is very important for lining up those broadsides. We also have the Corsair Wranglers, which are a really funky kind of unit. The idea behind this is that it is a back rank of Elven Corsairs and a front rank of Night Stalker units. So we've boxed this together with the Reapers. It's a great representation of what they can be. This is a good chaff or harassment piece, and they have a special rule called Unleashed, essentially simulating the Night Stalkers being let go in front of the unit ahead and charging in and disordering them. So it's a really interesting kind of disruptive piece that can work synergistically, especially with things like the Void Skiffs. If you want to stop a flyer from jumping into your back lines, this can be a really essential piece to being able to accomplish that. Leading the Corsairs through the Void is the Navigator. This is a unit that is a hero option that allows you to throw out a number of different auras that can benefit all three of the different unit types that are found within the Twilight Kin list. For the Corsairs especially, they get access to Vicious. So this is something that with the Twilight Elf keyword, you're gonna able, be able to put out a number of offensive bonuses to them. I love this unit with something like the Loot of Insatiable Darkness or even the Inspiring Talisman that allows you to have it supporting your lines in other ways. 
So by being able to throw out a crushing strength and vicious onto a unit that's really beneficial. And on the fly, you can switch this aura up turn to turn so that you can benefit the other units in the list as well. I think everybody's gonna want at least one of these in their list, if not more. Next, we'll take a look at the assassin. So assassin unit types are ones that have had a lot of, uh, let's say, controversy over the years. They find it difficult to get into the position to do what they do best, so it would make a lot of sense if you gave them a secondary role if they couldn't go hunt characters. In this case, with the Fell Blades on the Twilight Kin Assassin, you've got an option to apply a negative damage modifier to the unit that it charges into. So this can be used really well with something like the Blood Hex. Uh, it doesn't combine with weakness, as you can see in the description, but it's something that I think is really beneficial, especially when you think about Impalers having defense six in the front. All of a sudden, you can really take away the strengths of the opposing army. This is also going to be a vault exclusive miniature, which I will show off now. It's something that's going to be available for 3D prints, and you guys can get these, get your hands on these in the vault sometime very soon. That's it for our Corsair and Twilight Elf units. Next time we are gonna take a look at the Void Touched, which they've got all kinds of fun stuff built into them. So stay tuned, we've got lots of Twilight Kin previews and the full rules are gonna be available sooner than you think. Thanks guys.